Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. Careers are ever more STEM-centric, that is science, technology, engineering, and math, which means lots of math. So what's a person who's not a math person to do? Fortunately, ample math light careers remain, and here's a sampling. Psychotherapist, counselor or coach. Another example, social worker. Um, on the job market, uh, which is good for social workers, but bad for society, I suppose, the job markets likely will remain good. There's no sign that the number of people in distress is going to decline. Politician. Among careers that don't require math chops, politicians are among the most impactful. Even a local politician's vote or executive decision can affect thousands of people, and if it's a state or federal official, official millions of people. Mediator. If you're a lawyer or a psychologist or even a, yeah, or some kind of counselor person with a gift for conflict resolution uh, and, alas, for marketing, you could make a living in this rewarding career. To avoid having to compete with the zillions of people who would like to escape, uh, for example, contentious lawyering, it helps to specialize. Some niches, landlord-tenant, divorce, or employees in a particular field. For example, one of my clients specializes in mediating disputes between workers having gone postal, that is postal workers, as well and their management. Haircutter. The good haircutter needs to be kind of a psychologist. He or she asks questions, listens, and intuits what's going to make the client feel more confident. He or she also senses how to converse during the haircut. Go deep, be casual, be silent. Haircutter usually ranks near the top in surveys of job satisfaction. Teacher. If you can motivate kids to behave and work hard to learn academic material, teaching, of course, can be a rewarding career, and not just intrinsically. It's a myth that public school teachers are underpaid relative to their intellectual, physical, and temporal capabilities and the demands of the job. For example, teachers have among the lowest average SAT score of any white-collar profession. And teachers teach just typically from 8.30 to 3 and less on so-called minimum days. Yes, they do have to correct papers and create lessons. I do acknowledge that, of course. Teachers work in pleasant surroundings, no dangerous roofs, sewers, nor clanging carcinogenic factories. And today, whenever more jobs are part-time temp with few benefits, the vast majority of public school teaching jobs are full-time and super benefited. Teaching is among the few jobs in which you get lifetime job security after just two or three years. And after you retire, you get a pension. Plus, teachers mid-career in many coastal cities and suburbs can earn six figures. And yeah, on top of it all, you get the summers off. A case can even be made for a person who's not a math person to teach math. That's because naturals at math typically use a different process to do math than do mere mortals. The person who struggled to get through math is more likely to use a process that most students can understand. That kind of teacher is also likely to have more empathy for strugglers. Plus, the typical math nerd is stronger at math than at explaining, than at explaining and motivating students. Might you, therefore, even if you're not a math person, be a really good math teacher? Next on my list of careers for not math people is non-STEM sales or fundraising. That is, sales or fundraising that doesn't have science, technology, engineering, and math involved. Sales and its nonprofit analog fundraising are among the more lucrative careers that don't require an advanced degrees, degree. Here are a few sales niches that might particularly appeal to people who are psychologically oriented. Uh, wedding venue and catering sales, senior housing, and personnel recruiting. That's a sales gig because you are selling companies and nonprofits to buy you as the person to recruit its new employees. And in the nonprofit realm, um, psychologically oriented folks might be happy as a fundraiser for, for example, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, the National Association for Gifted Children, or Autism Speaks. Graphic artist. No, you probably can't make a living taking months to splatter paint on a canvas, but you might make a living, make, make a living in art if you can uh, quickly produce quality images that will move people to buy or to donate. Writer. Similar to graphic artists, you're probably not going to make even a ramen and cat food living writing fiction. 
but writers can make a living if they're willing to forego creative wildness for business writing, for example, fundraising letters and speeches, marketing copy, annual reports, or PR media pitches. Attorney. This is among the more lucrative careers that require a little math. Of course, tax, estate, and some corporate lawyers need to be good number crunches, but many niches don't. Some specialties of potential interest to the psychologically oriented, divorce law, elder law, and employment law. And finally, people manager in a non-STEM field. Niches that you might want to consider are professional associations, for example, the American Psychological Association, employee assistance companies, and education administration. K through 20, that is kindergarten through college, education has a notoriously high administrator to teacher ratio. Of course, this is but a sampling. Even if none are of interest to you, it may at least be reassuring that you can have good employment prospects even if you are not a math person. In any case, thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemco. Feel free to give us a thumbs up or if needed a thumbs down uh, to hit the share button and share on your social media, uh, write a comment and or subscribe. In any event, thanks again for watching. I am Marty Nemco.